Ecolution. Hello and welcome to Ecolution. I'm Evie Kenny and I'm the host, as you can probably see because the camera is pointed right at me. We've been an audio podcast since 2019 and we're back with season five, but we thought it was high time we added some pictures. On the podcast, we've talked about the climate crisis, our environment, and all of the people, young and old, who are trying to be the change that will make our future sustainable. The audio podcast just dropped, but this is a new venture. For the YouTube version of Ecolution, we're going to take the subjects discussed in the podcast and dive deeper with a panel. We'll have a number of panels throughout the series, but today we're joined by students from across the Irish School Sustainability Network. I'll let our panellists introduce themselves. Uh, hi, I'm Pew and I come from Taney Parish Primary School. Hi, I'm Emma Regan and I come from St Mary's Secondary School in McCroom, Cork. Hi, I'm Yuming, I'm from Dublin in Belvedere College. Hi, I'm Chloe and I'm from St Mary's Secondary School in McCroom, County Cork as well. Thanks all. This week's podcast was all about the Dark Sky Park at Wild Neffin in County Mayo. We recorded with a huge group of kids and adults back in January and it was a really eye-opening celebration of the natural world the sky above us and how important it is for us to make space for nature, day and night. If you haven't already listened, just search for Ecolution wherever you get your podcasts. Really sadly, one of the main walkways onto the park was set ablaze a few weeks back, leading to extensive damage of the path and the natural habitat it borders. The path will be mended and the surrounding area will recover in time. But it's led to us to our discussion subject this episode. Everyone will have a chance to give their opinion, but I'm going to start with you, Hugh. Wild Neffin is a national park that's been set aside to protect nature, but do you think we're doing enough to preserve and improve biodiversity in Ireland? I think that maybe Ireland is doing a lot, yeah, but we could still definitely be doing more. There's a lot of things, like um, on mountains we have lots of heat there and now thanks to all the like radio station satellite tower things I don't know what they're called really but um, they're there and they're like chained up and disturbing the animals homes and I think uh, maybe move them a bit downwards the mountain yeah yeah and Emily I'm going to come to you next you and Chloe are based in West Cork what's been your experience there um well I definitely think in West Cork we have this share just appreciation for our nature and our biodiversity because it's so beautiful um but i don't think people know a lot about what they can do so i think even just within like communities you know tidy towns or anything like we have special protection areas and they're made known but i think just telling people you know you can do these things these small little things that can help biodiversity you know not throwing your plastic on the side of the road or going to the return schemes and stuff like that so yeah just like letting people know what they can do you know yeah and chloe I definitely, like, I think there's so many areas in West Cork anyway of just, like, beauty. Like, we have the Gare, we have Gugon Bar, and then you go down to the coast and we have all the areas there. So I think people are aware when those are in front of them of how gorgeous they are. And I think it's really, like, sometimes we take them for granted, but I think having the community organisations around the place that you can get involved with or in schools and they're taking trips there to those areas, you become more aware and then you feel like, oh, yeah, I can do something to help the biodiversity in this area. So, yeah, and a completely different perspective. You mean you're based in Dublin and you go to school in the inner city. What do you think are good and bad practices you see in the capital? Well, I think uh, we have a relatively decent public transport system. And I think that sometimes maybe we aren't utilising it enough. Like there's still a lot of people driving into work and I can understand that they're going from further away. But uh, instead of congesting the city, maybe they could do park and rides instead. That would be the one thing I'd improve. Other than that, I think we're doing really well in terms of like, you know, having small spaces on the sidewalks where like, you know, the gardens are managed for wildlife, which means like, you know, it's good for the pollinators. So yeah. I think overall we're doing quite good. Yeah. Very interesting. So that neatly leads me into the next question. I'll come to you, Chloe. Do you feel that there's a misunderstanding between urban and rural areas in how we handle biodiversity? Um, sometimes I think it can feel for people living in rural areas, especially like farmers, that they're kind of being attacked maybe by the government, by the big urban areas and that these people don't really know what's going on in rural areas and in agriculture. But I think uh, in recent years anyway, I think there's become like a common acceptance and a common like shared goal. They've come to realise that there's a goal there and they're working towards it together. So like one really good initiative is the grants for farmers to build more or to improve forestry in their area 
and to grow more trees. And I know myself, like my grandfather, we've planted trees in his land um, and it's a great day out and we really enjoyed it. But it's also, you know, you, you know, you're doing something for the environment and there's a lot of groups there that help with those efforts. So I think it's good now to see a mix between urban and rural initiatives and that they connect better. Amazing. And Emily, West Cork is a place known for its natural beauty. It's home to some of the last wild places in the country. And as you mentioned earlier on, you do think that the people appreciate that beauty. Do you feel that that biodiversity is well handled by the people who live and work there? Um, For what I can see, yeah, like in my town, McCroom, we all really do respect any initiatives that the tidy towns put up because we appreciate it. Um, What I do think, though, is that there can be that bit of disconnect between like the likes of McCroom or like the coast and anything from like Cork City Centre um you know like it could, they're just two completely different areas and you know you travel 20 minutes out the road from Cork and you see a completely different place you know um so I suppose what I could see just going off your question there is just like we need more inter um I don't know what to say it, inter area stuff like joint things from what I can see anyway from my town in my crew, just so we can all get on the same page and realise we're all in this together. Yeah, yeah. Hugh, you are from Dublin and yeah. you live close to the capital. What's your view? Is there a town and country divide in how to handle nature? I think all of Ireland really kind of agrees. We, I think everywhere there's a similar method. I think it's all really helpful to have we ch- uh, to try and fight by biodiversity loss I think it's all really helpful all around Ireland all really the same so yeah 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 and you Ming that that same question do you feel that there's a divide in how towns and countries countryside handle this yeah because uh, I've actually got Tommy and he's from Meath and you know what he sees about climate change what I see about climate change is really different because he's from the countryside obviously and like so I think maybe if we can get a more connected going like as like Emily said I think it'd be much more beneficial so we need more inter-county uh, collaborations is what I'm hearing <laughs> so we really like to highlight potential solutions on ecolution it's almost in the title one solution that's been written already is the nature restoration law EU member states have committed to restoring at least 20% of land and sea areas by 2030 and all ecosystems in need of restoration by 2050 so what do you think is widespread nature restoration and rewilding something you feel could work in Ireland? Hugh, I'll come to you first. I think it would work. I think helping with the environment, help doing all that, that would be very helpful, yeah. Yeah, and, and do you think it's something that, that we could do as as a community? Yeah, I think we could, yeah? we could manage that. <laughs> we can manage it, <laughs> just about. We can now manage Kerry Gold better, we can manage this. <laughs> <laughs> Emily, what are your thoughts? Is it something that you could see happening in McCroom? Yeah, I could see it happening. Um, not just in McCroom and the whole of Ireland, I suppose. Like, I think bit by bit, if we get there, but I think you know the whole community needs to be involved in it. Um, everyone needs to be told about it first, and everyone needs that bit of you know joint respect for whatever's going on in your local area. Yeah, uh, and you mean Dublin has the Phoenix Park, but we're not really known for wild spaces. Is this something you think can and should happen in urban areas too? I think so. Yeah, most obviously. Yeah. Like, it would be definitely a great step in the right direction. I'd yeah. love to see it happen. I'd love to have, like, two Phoenix Parks even, you know, that'd be amazing. Mm. Uh, green space is definitely needed. Uh, and Chloe, Emily spoke about her view. Mm-hmm. Do you look at this in any way differently? How likely are you that restoration or rewilding will happen? I actually think Ireland is, like, the perfect location for the EU's restoration plan. I think we've seen in recent years the impact rewilding has had on the nature and the environment in Ireland, like um, in the forest cover in Ireland, it reached dramatic like downfalls by the end of plantations. And ever since we've been trying to rewild Ireland, um, but even by 2016, Ireland had the lowest forest cover in all of the European Union with only like 10.7% or something. And ever since we've been growing it up and up. And I think like that's just one example. I think we can continue to grow in every area and every sense of the word. And I think because Ireland is so focused, like the green fields of Ireland, it is so in nature focused and environmentally focused that it should be no reason that we can't improve our biodiversity here. Yeah, it's almost embedded into our culture. We just need to start acting on it. So we're coming to a close. 
but we would like to include listeners' questions whenever we can, and this one is right on topic. I'm Jack. And I'm Dan. And we are from, from Fairfield National, National School. School. In our school, we let the grass grow to help the bees. What, ac- what one action would you suggest to help people to help biodiversity? So if you could give one suggestion, Hugh, what would it be? I don't really have a good take on this, to be honest. That's okay. You know, we can't always have the answers. Chloe, your tip? I think the little small gardens that people are beginning to plant, either for the bees or for the other wildlife around the area, I think it's kind of a dual purpose. It's it's lovely to look at. It fills a space. It's very well kept. It brings community closer together. People can work together on this garden. And then it's also helping the environment. And it's a small little act, but it really helps biodiversity in an area. And as they grow, like I think it just helps in every aspect and every possible sense it could. Yeah. And you, Ming, what would be your one quick win? I think you should go on a beach cleanup. <laughs> if, if you don't have a beach near you, maybe just like a city or a park cleanup. Like, whether you believe in climate change or not, I think we would all love a clean space to just hang out in, you know. Instead of seeing trash on the road, you go pick that up and suddenly the next time the next person's there and it's clean again, and they'd be, I think they'd be happier. 100%, that's such a good point. And Emily, if someone didn't have a garden or a similar space, what should they do? Um, I think just a very easy thing to do is just be respectful. Um, you know, don't go shoving your friends into the ditch on the way home from school. Just stuff like that, you know, like if you see a habitat out, like everything is a habitat, like side of the road, hedges, all that kind of stuff, or you see animals, you know, birds, just leave them be. Um, don't try to aggravate them. Don't be throwing your rubbish into it. Just be respectful, leave them be, mind your business, and then mind their business and flourish. So, yeah. Such good tips. I'm going to start <laughs> taking them all in. <laughs> I think my suggestion would just be that, as Emily said earlier on, appreciating nature is such an easy thing to do and just have a look around you and realise that the world we live in is not permanent and we need to really look after it. So guys I cannot thank you enough for being a part of our first episode on YouTube. We'll meet again. The plan is that we'll drop a new episode of the show each week to line up with the pod which again you can find wherever you get your podcasts. Follow and give us a review if you can. It really helps us raise the profile of these issues. If you have thoughts you'd like to discuss or your own action for biodiversity you'd like to share, get in touch at the email below, junior at rte.ie. See you next time.